Episode 1 You don't know how hard it's been to keep my hands off you. My body trembled as he closed the space between us, my body pulsing with need. Wrapping his arms around my waist, he pulled me in tight. You're all fucking mine, virgin. I nodded, yes, please. Then his lips were on mine, teasing them into a deep kiss. Shivers danced down my spine as his strong, firm hands traced their way down my body to cup my ass. I steadied myself on his strong biceps, intoxicated by the feel of them. A delicious jolt washed through me and I ran my hands up to grasp his soft, dark hair. His full lips moved down my neck, hitting a sensitive spot that made me moan loudly. I want you so bad, he said as he moved us toward the bed. He took a step back and I couldn't help myself, whimpering at the lost contact. A dark chuckle rumbled from deep within his chest. Are you going to be patient or are you going to misbehave? My trembling hands found the hem of my shirt and I peeled it off. I looked him directly in the eyes as I lowered myself onto the bed, dropping the shirt in front of me. Oops. His laugh was low and toe curling. I can't believe you're all mine. This certified sex god knew exactly how to torture me into a puddle of frustration. And he was my boyfriend. Yum. My wonderful boyfriend, uh, um, wait, shit. How the hell did I forget my boyfriend's name? There's something I want to try with you. He breathed out. What's that? I asked, burning under his hungry gaze. This. I blinked rapidly, not sure I was seeing things correctly. My sexy sex god boyfriend, who was definitely going to sleep with me, had a pink elephant standing behind him. Uh, what's going on? Did you see the pink elephant teacup set on Etsy? They're so cute, right? Huh? The elephant behind him had vanished. My head was definitely getting a little too clouded with desire. As my eyes refocused, I noticed he was holding a blindfold. Do you know what happens to bad girls? I shook my head, trying to sexy bite my lip. No. He smirked. We'll get ready to... Wake up, you lazy bee! My eyes snapped open to see not a hot guy, but my best friend Lola, who was unpleasantly shaking me awake. No! I shouted. Did you have to do that right now? Did you seriously fall asleep? Have I been talking to myself this whole time? I forced myself to get up off my bed. I was having the most amazing dream and would have preferred not to have been woken up, especially so rudely. You can't sleep our break away, Lola said. I narrowly dodged an incoming pillow she hurled at me as I sat down in my computer chair. I want to get out of here, go on a holiday or something. I groaned, leaning back on the chair, still a little groggy. I swiveled around to my own amusement, kicking out my leg to hit Lola each time I passed. I stopped when she slapped my leg. Then stop whining and go. Yeah? With what money? I cracked my stiff knuckles. It felt so good to be free of college. It lasted forever. The year droned on, and to be on break now was amazing. What wasn't amazing was having no money. That was one of the biggest problems of being a college student, unless your parents were rich. Sadly, mine weren't. What's a quick way to make easy money? I leaned forward. Lola's eyebrows raised, her mouth opening slightly while her eyes refused to leave the laptop screen. Funny you say that. The shock disappeared off her face and a grin appeared before glancing up to me. You're still a virgin, right? I blushed and couldn't help but think back to my dream. If she hadn't woken me up, hello, am I talking to myself again? I snapped out of my little daydream. I'm not becoming a sex worker, Lola. This isn't a sex work site, Kaliana. She rolled her eyes. Did you know a girl almost sold her virginity for $500,000? Another did it for $250,000. That's weird, did they get murdered? She looked up at me in confusion. What? Have you not seen the movie Taken? 
They were probably sold into a sex trade or whatever it's called. I kicked up my legs and landed them onto the bed. Or murdered. Seriously, I want to slap you sometimes. No, they didn't die, but they sure as hell became wealthy bitches. Ugh. Why the hell did I have to lose my virginity to Jay? Um, Tommy? She sighed. I could have been rich. I couldn't help but laugh at this. I don't think any random girl can auction off her virginity. She probably has to be important. Her eyes snapped to mine. If I auctioned yours off for a good price, will you give me some money? I'm not auctioning off my virginity, Lola. Weren't you the one complaining, I hate being a virgin at this age. Why can't I find some gorgeous human to take it? Yes, that was me. And it was on my mind so much lately, I was getting more and more frustrated. Let's just say it hadn't been the first um, dream I'd had the past few days. But I don't think a gorgeous human would pay for sex. Only those creepy looking sugar daddies. And my answer to that is no thank you. She frowned. Okay, what if I find a cute guy? I mean, he probably doesn't even live close, so it can be counted as a holiday too. I'll even come with you. Oh my God, I sighed. You're actually serious about this, aren't you? I can't afford the travel. Does this face look like it's joking? He'd obviously pay for you. She offered me one of the most serious expressions ever. I shook my head. Not a chance. I'd rather not die or be seen as a slut. Don't slut shame. You told me yourself you might have to drop out of school because you don't have the money. This is a crisis, Callie. Can we not bring that up? I wasn't proud of it. My parents were having financial problems and I lost my part-time job recently. So I was beyond screwed at the moment and not in the fun way. How about you be helpful and try find me a job? Get off that site. This is your job. This is your destiny. I snorted when she said that. She was such a creep, but I wanted no other creep in my life but her. Kelly, come on. You won't even think about it. Do you know how wrong that is? She scrunched up her face. You planning to save your virginity until marriage? First of all, there's nothing wrong with that, I said. But no, I don't plan on waiting that long. It wasn't that I was waiting, but every guy I was ever interested in, well, wasn't. This is perfect then. I suppressed an eye roll. Fine, find me someone cute who pays a good price and I will. Seriously? Sure, saying this would shut her up. I wasn't lying either, because no way was there a good-looking guy who paid for sex. They could get it with the snap of a finger. Leave it to me, girl. I got your back. I really wish you didn't, I sighed. You not going back to your family for break? This is home. Renting this place with you is great, she winked. You're just as lucky to have me. I rolled my eyes, pushing myself up from the chair before Lola ripped one. I turned to her with a scowl plastered on my face. Why is it that you always decide to fart on my bed? I don't want to stink up mine, obviously. You disgust me, I groaned. I'm going for a shower. No bothering me. She said nothing in reply, but stayed focused on her laptop screen. It was a one-bedroom apartment. The place was pretty small, but it was the only place we could afford between us. Sometimes Lola even paid more than half the rent and made me feel terrible. I'd pay her back in the long run. Sell your virginity and pay her back. I grinned at the dumb idea before shutting the bathroom door and stripping down. As the steam from the shower filled the room, I allowed myself to think back on my recent dream. I hopped in the water and let my mind drift. I might have been a virgin, but some things I could take care of myself. With one towel wrapped around me tightly and another towel securing my damp hair, I left the bathroom feeling better. The soft carpet hugged my toes. Walking barefoot on this carpet was like walking on pillows. I rushed into my room where my phone was ringing. 
Lola was still there but now lying in a different position. She glanced to me only for a second, then returned her eyes to the screen. Hello? Hey, honey. I smiled at my dad's voice. You planning on coming home for break? I'm staying here for a while, but I'll definitely make sure to visit. I don't want to leave Lola alone. I cleared my throat. How's mom? She's getting a checkup right now. His tone changed when he spoke about her. Pain in his voice. I've got good news, though. Cheer me up, pops. We're getting a loan for the operation. You can get loans? Something like that. Something like that? All that matters is she gets the operation. Aren't you happy, Kaliana? I'm delighted. I made my voice chirpy. Just worried about how you're going to pay it back. We have some money. I don't want you to worry about it. I'll find some way to help pay for college, too. Dad, no. I found a part-time job. Already? I'm so proud of you. The moment you fall off the horse, you get back on. Yeah, I muttered, instantly feeling bad about lying, but he was already so stressed. I gotta go, Dad. Tell Mom I love her, and I'll call her soon. Will do, darling. He suddenly sounded so happy, and I couldn't help but smile. I put down my phone, the lie still a sour taste in my mouth. I leaned on the dresser and let out a groan, dragging my hand down my face. What's your new job? Can you not eavesdrop? You were talking loudly in the same room. I don't want to talk about it. I can loan you money if you want. She sat up, placing her laptop beside her. She was loyal no matter what. Lola offered me a small smile. How's your mom? She's getting the operation. My dad got a loan. Oh my God, that's great, Callie. Her smile was genuine and it definitely cheered me up a bit. Everyone needed a friend like Lola, someone who knew how to act in any situation. Yeah, the worry in the back of my mind was about the loan. Dad couldn't afford it and it made me sick to the stomach. I hated how he still worried about my college, too. Maybe it was time to hit Craigslist for odd jobs. Or... Lola? I paused for a second, taking a breath. I couldn't believe what I was about to ask her. How much do you think I could sell my virginity for? Episode 2 Wake up! Lola's voice woke me up. I felt drool at the side of my mouth and wiped it away in disgust. Foiled yet again from seeing where things would go with my mystery dream man. So much easier than real life, but not if people kept interrupting. Lola poked me in the side. Hey, I'm up, how long was I out? 20 minutes, lazy ass. I ignored her comment, my eyes landing on her laptop. The web page already open so sue me if I wanted to go to sexy dreamland again. Lola spoke honestly. I still don't know if you're joking about this, Callie. I didn't either. But my parents were in trouble. They wouldn't be able to pay the loan, at least not if there was a deadline. They'd be in trouble and seeing them go through that was worse than me going through it. What if their house was taken away or they went to jail? I didn't know how this stuff worked. Plus, I definitely wasn't going to be able to pay for college next year unless I quickly found a job that paid super well. Even then, I wouldn't be able to make a dent in that loan. It was just my virginity, right? Virginity was a huge deal for some girls, but not really for me. It wasn't for lack of trying either, but no one being the right fit. This made me feel like a sex worker, selling my body for sex which was a legit job and all, but maybe not the one for me right now. Also, it wasn't my ideal scenario to have my first time be with some ugly, creepy sugar daddy. Those had to be the clients on this site. Maybe if no one knew about it, it would be okay. Lola wouldn't tell a soul. I trusted her with my life. I nibbled my lip, anxious about this whole situation. I was seriously thinking about this. Had I lost it? Should I just download Tinder? Depends, I muttered, biting my bottom lip. 
Lola arched an eyebrow, uncrossing her legs. On? How much money? If someone would even pay for me? I didn't believe anyone would. No one had been mutually interested in me this far, which was why I was actually considering it. We were thinking of possibilities, that's all. What the person is like and looks like. I'm not looking for Mr. Perfect, but I'm avoiding Mr. Blech. That's all? And you can't tell a soul or judge me. Kale, this was my idea. I can't judge you, she sighed. I promise I won't let you go to any guy who would kidnap you, and I'll only let you go through with it if they pay well. Was it bad I actually trusted her with this? I was half serious, half not, about this whole situation. I mean, what if the guy was hot? Or he paid me enough to pay for mom's treatment? It would be worth it then for one night, right? Go for it. Really? Her eyes lit up. If you're joking, I'm not going through all this trouble. I'm serious, Lola, do it. I'll give you some of the money. Deal? A huge smile appeared on her face. You're the best, Callie. I pulled out my phone. Oh, God. Guess what I have? One missed call from Alex. Seriously? That boy does not know how to take a no, Lola muttered, although she seemed like she wasn't focused on me at all. She was dead serious about this whole virginity thing, and it made me smile. I was too, but I knew that no one would pay for me. We'd do this because it took our mind off the shitty reality. Go through the motions, the hypotheticals, and tomorrow would be exactly the same as today. I better call him back. You're an idiot, she mumbled. I dialed Alex's number, refusing to listen to her comment. He picked up on the first ring. Kellyanna? His voice was extremely eager. The other night was great. Did you get my texts? Cool. I did. Sorry I couldn't reply. Something big came up. I lied through my teeth and noticed the smirk on Lola's face. Damn, why did she always have to be right? No problem, he chirped. I talked to your father yesterday. Wait, what? You did? Why? My brow furrowed in confusion. Oh my God, if he told him we were a thing, I was going to crawl into a hole and never come out. I ran into him at the pharmacy. His voice went quiet. He said your mom's doing well. I sighed. I don't really want to talk about it. Sorry, I shouldn't have brought it up. Nope, but you did. I knew he was cringing about it and I couldn't help but feel a little bad. He was just trying to be a good friend. Are you free tonight? Lola's staying over. Girls night, that's fine, I get it. He went silent for a moment. Leroy, don't put the fork there. Leroy! Damn it! Kelly, I have to go. I'll call you later. Leroy! The line went dead and I couldn't help but laugh. Leroy was Alex's younger brother probably the cutest but most annoying brat in the world. I'm staying over in our house? Lola asked, catching my lie. Shut it, I responded. If you aren't interested, you need to tell him. Don't lead him on or he'll think you're into him. I frowned. He's so sweet and everything, but it just always gets awkward. We've been friends for so long that I only see him in that way. That's the only reason I'm not agreeing to the dates. To be honest, Alex was cute in a boyish type of way. He wouldn't be put into my hot guy group, but definitely the cute one. He had looks that a lot of girls loved, especially with nerdy glasses that suited him to perfection. He was around five foot nine inches, and although I usually wasn't fond of really short hair, it suited him. I had known him growing up because my parents knew his parents. When they divorced, I helped him through a tough time, just like he was trying to help me now. That, and he was my first kiss. After that, he kind of took that as if I loved him. It was a spur of the moment thing. Maybe not my finest desperate virgin move ever. No dating until this all happens. Lola pulled me from my thoughts. What? You can't date until I sell your virginity, so hold off, Kay. I burst out laughing and she grinned in response. I met her in high school when she moved schools. 
I had expected her to be shy and nervous since she was new, but she was so loudmouthed. We clicked the moment she shouted at a girl named Cynthia who called me a loner freak for eating outside alone. It was nice out, so sue me. Lola blew up and I was amazed because nobody stood up to Cynthia. We had been best friends for years after that, and she brought me out of my shell. Sure, I still wasn't as brave and outgoing as her, but I wasn't the quiet mouse anymore. Are you sure you haven't done this before? You seem to know all the ins and outs. I arched an eyebrow and she stuck out her tongue like a child. I wouldn't be surprised if she had, but I knew how she lost her own virginity. Makeover time! Lola pulled me from my comfy position and I groaned. She reached for the brush on my bedside table and passed it to me. Brush, she ordered, getting off the bed and going to my vanity table. I did as I was told and brushed my hair. I never dyed it. I was a natural brunette. Lola dyed her hair so many colors, she currently had platinum hair, which really suited her. My hair fell just below my breasts. It usually was straight, but sometimes a small wave would appear if it got wet, but disappeared the moment I brushed it, like right now. Lola returned to the bed with makeup. She was basically a makeup artist, what with all the YouTube videos she was always watching. I only wore mascara and eyeliner, nothing else. It all looked too complicated and most of all, expensive. Lola, don't put too much on because if I actually meet a guy, I'm not gonna be pampered in makeup. You're right, she paused. Well, you're naturally gorgeous. Contour a tiny bit, then put on mascara, and maybe winged eyeliner. Whatever most of that meant. It felt like years until she was finally done with my face. Am I free now? I asked, earning a scowl from her. She brought over a mirror and showed me. I looked natural, but not. It was that weird, no makeup, makeup, and to be honest, I felt pretty like this. Maybe there was a method to all her videos. Good job, I muttered, giving in. Okay, selfie time, she passed me her phone. I'll upload it to my laptop later. Take lots of pics, then we need to go outside and take a picture so it's obvious you're real and have friends. Huh? What are you talking about? We're taking photos for your profile. She looked at me like I was the crazy one. We're auctioning off your virginity starting tonight. Episode 3 Hey, Callie, I'm glad you were able to come. Alex stopped before giving me a hug. Wow, are you okay? Didn't get much sleep, I yawned. All day yesterday was spent with pictures, poses, learning to accept the good things about me, and so much more. I finally got to sleep at 4 a.m. after Lola thought we should watch movies relating to this whole topic, as well as a sugar daddy documentary, promising me she'd watch out for the total weirdos. I couldn't believe this whole thing was happening. Maybe. I couldn't tell what was for fun and what was real anymore. Alex had woken me up that morning on his way to work. He asked if I wanted to go out later, and of course I didn't know what was going on, so I said yes. Otherwise, I would have probably said no. I had wanted the call to end. I didn't want to be an asshole and cancel the whole thing. If you want to go home, I'm fine, need a cup of coffee, that's all. We were chilling at the mall while he was waiting for his brother Leroy to finish a play date at a friend's house. At least this wasn't like a date, just two friends hanging out at the mall who happened to kiss one time, casual. Although I objected, Alex paid for my coffee and we took a seat near the corner. How was work? I asked, trying to make small talk. He shrugged, boring as usual. Alex was going to be a college senior next year, but had been working a part-time job all four years. I perked up. Maybe he could talk to his manager to see if they had any openings. What is it you do again? He grinned. Are you excited for your next year of college? I made sure not to frown or show any concern that I may not be able to continue. Smooth topic change, straight to education. My bad. He held up his hand laughing. Let's see, do you want children in the future? My eyes widened and my jaw dropped. Why would he ask that? 
Suddenly he burst out laughing so loud we definitely received a few glances. Kelly, your face. You should have seen it. I love messing with you. That wasn't funny. I thought, I cut off my sentence. I thought you meant you wanted to make some with me. A blush crept up my cheeks that I hoped Alex didn't notice. I cleared my throat. So any break plans? He shook his head. Maybe, depends. What about you? Confused at his answer and the flutter in my stomach, I moved on. Yeah, I'm going on a beautiful cruise and paying for it with all of my imaginary money. The joys of a college student. You need a loan? No, but thanks. If I needed one, Lola would have showered me with money already. That was both a truth and a lie. Lola didn't have the money to shower me with, but if she did, she sure as hell would give it to me if I needed it. I'll try to get another job. Is your place hiring? No, he said quickly. Why don't you apply here, to Starbucks? I scrunched up my face. No, thank you. I already have horrible penmanship. He laughed. How's Lola been? Lola's being Lola. Weird, outgoing, different, hyper laptop geek? You know it. He leaned back in his chair and took a sip of his drink. I was almost finished with my coffee and I was starting to feel a bit more awake. What kept you up last night? He suddenly frowned. Maybe I don't want to know. My entire body flushed. I might be dense sometimes, but I knew what he was getting at. Sex. With someone last night. Huh. <laughs> if he only knew. I told you Lola was staying over. And then I remembered you live in the same house. I swallowed. Okay, fine. I lied. It was half the truth. She was staying in my room like a sleepover. The stuff we were doing was top secret and not something I could cancel. And did you have a slow motion pillow fight until the late hours? He winked. I rolled my eyes and wished they'd go further into my head. Maybe I'd freak some people out and get out of this awkward conversation. This mall Starbucks would love it. Alex pushed his glasses up his nose. His blue eyes windowed behind them. He stood up and stretched, and I couldn't help but study his body. He didn't seem like the guy who worked out, so girls were always surprised with his fit body. His abs weren't defined, but they were there. I'd seen them at a pool day once. Eyes are up here, he said, grinning. I rolled my eyes and stood up, following him to the trash where we recycled the empty cups. How long until Leroy's done? I asked, causing Alex to glance down at his watch. His eyebrows raised, 20 minutes. I nodded my head. I seriously wanted to fall asleep. I needed more sleep than I had gotten last night. And my sex dream guy hadn't made an appearance again either. Of course, Lola slept in for ages because, well, she was Lola and she hadn't made a promise to hang out with a cute, sorta hot guy she kissed once who was nine times out of 10 saw as a friend. Alex and I talked and walked, trying to pass the time before we would go pick up his brother. Somehow we ended up in a clothing shop even though neither of us was completely interested in it. I didn't mind clothes shopping, but it was always better when I was looking for something, not browsing. We aimlessly walked around before I paused at the discount rack. I hadn't planned a shop, but Lola was always stealing my clothes, so maybe more wouldn't hurt. And I might need some new outfits if, if anyone actually bid on my virginity. I quickly pushed the thought away, shaking my head. Then, in the corner of my eyes, I saw a tight-fitting dress that had a really nice belt with it. I pursed my lips before turning my head when I felt a hand on my shoulders. Didn't know you were the dressy type, Alex commented. I always see you in jeans or leggings. I never really go to things that require getting dressed up. Alex paused, then started laughing. Do you remember our little date? He seemed not to know what to call it. How my car broke down and we ended up having to go to McDonald's? I burst out laughing. Of course, and I got to try the new McFlurry. I remember, he said. You had ice cream on your lip and I wanted to kiss you again so badly. I didn't know what to say to that. Alex, 
The kiss had led him on and I felt so bad for it. Even though the kiss had felt good, it felt worse after the fact. The worst part was that it didn't seem like he was even trying to date anyone else. He smiled and tilted his head. How about a deal, Hart? What kind? If I buy you this dress, you give me a second date. I don't want you to buy anything for me, Alex. I shook my head. I had to let him know how I felt. We've been friends forever, and you're a really important person to me, but... His face lit up. Then he nodded his head before his eyes widened. It's a date. What day works best for you? Wait, damn it. I think I left my phone at Starbucks. He closed his eyes, huffing. Do you mind looking there while I look at the fountain? Sure. I knew the panic people felt about a lost phone. After pushing through people, I finally ended up at the table we'd sat at. I looked high and low, even in a set of plants nearby. No phone. I was about to try to go find Alex when I saw him coming from the shop with his phone in his hand. But that wasn't the item I was looking at. In his other hand, he held a shopping bag. Of course, only he would trick me so he could buy something for me. I didn't know how that made me feel. Alex, go return that right now. Receipt's gone, you can't. It's rude to reject a present. Are you really going to be rude? Well, I didn't like that. After he held out the bag for a while, I finally took it, offering him a forced but grateful smile. Thank you, Alex. You really didn't need to do that, though. At least it's a definite yes to getting a second date, right? He winked, and I bit my lip. Alex was a smooth talker, and to most people, seriously boyfriend material. Lola popped into my mind, and I instantly felt guilt. It reminded me of what she said the other day, not to lead him on or date anyone because of the little idea we had. My virginity. Sex with someone who wasn't Alex, if I even wanted that to begin with. Deep down, part of me knew if I asked Alex, we'd probably be off making out right now. Thinking it over, I realized how stupid and embarrassing that whole plan was. It wouldn't happen. We wouldn't find anyone who wasn't a total creep and could pay anywhere close to what I needed to cover my mom's bills. Maybe I should cancel the whole thing and settle. I jumped when my phone buzzed, not expecting anyone to call me. Alex arched an eyebrow and I gave him a small shrug before answering. Lola, I was actually about to call you. I'm not so sure. Shut up, I rang first, I speak first. She paused and when I didn't say anything, she continued. How does $400,000 sound for your virginity?